Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 42, Custom Exceptions. In this session, we will learn when to create custom exceptions, creating a custom exception from the scratch, throwing and catching the custom exception that we create. Now, to understand custom exceptions properly, you should already have a good understanding of inheritance exception handling basics and inner exceptions. If you want to learn more about these concepts, uh, please watch parts 21, 40 and 41 of this video series. Now, when do you usually go for creating your own custom exceptions? Why is there a need to do so? Because if you look at .NET itself, .NET provides us with so many exceptions. You know, we have file not found exception, you know, index out of range exception. .NET provides us with so many exceptions. So what is the need for us to create our own custom exception? That's what we'll answer in a bit. But to find out all the exceptions that are already available within the .NET framework, what you can do is you can go to the debug menu and select exceptions button. This window will show you all the available uh, you know .NET exceptions already and to get to this window another keyboard shortcut is alt Control e for example you know we know that uh, if we are trying to read from a file and if the file is not found we usually throw a file not found exception so if I want to find that file not found exception go to common language runtime exceptions and we know that any classes to do with system IO are present in uh, um, system.io namespace so if you see here system.io dot file not found exception okay so similarly there are so many exceptions within the dotnet framework now there might be scenarios where one of these exceptions that are already available may not be adequate enough to describe the problem that I have let's look at an example now let's say I have an ASP.NET web application and the requirement of this application is such that it should only allow us you know to log in one time in a browser window if I am already logged in in a browser window and if I try to open another browser window and if I try to again log in there it should throw an error message saying you are already logged in and to serve this purpose and to describe this problem adequately enough we don't have any exception that's already available within the dotnet framework so this could be one of the classical examples when you want to design your own custom exception okay and to do that we have certain steps and it's very easy to do that okay so let's look at step by step of creating our own custom exception okay so to create a custom exception and we know that an exception is nothing but a class for example if you look at the exception class itself you know it's a class by itself okay and we know that all exceptions within the dotnet framework directly or indirectly inherit from the system.exception class so system.exception class is the base class for all other exceptions that are already available within a dotnet framework now if you want to create your own custom exception class and if you want all the features that an exception object uh, having then you make your custom exception class inherit from that base exception class this way you don't have to provide any of that functionality you inherit all that functionality from the basic exception class that's why when you're creating your own exception class the first step in doing so is to create a class that inherit from the exception class so public class and we want to name our class as user already logged in and we want to make this class inherit from the exception based class okay now you know that you know we, we know that we have file not found exception for example look at that and file not found exception by the way it's in the system namespace so we have to import that so system.io and now if I try to look at the file not found exception for example so file not found exception if you look at this file not found exception or uh, you know index out of range exception so all the exceptions basically end with this suffix exception okay so what's the advantage of that basically just by looking at the name of the class you can say okay this is an exception class okay so even your exceptions you know if I say user already logged in okay is this a regular class or an exception class so just to identify to differentiate 
that we can you know it's 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 a common convention to actually end your class name with the exception suffix this way by looking at the name of the class you can say okay this is an exception class just like file not found exception or you know index out of range exception or invalid operation exception user already logged in exception okay so follow that convention even if you don't do that you know if, if, if you omit this exception you don't get any compile time error but you are slightly deviating from the design guidelines of creating a custom exception class all right so I mean to create your custom class at the minimum this is what you have to do you're done creating your custom exception class okay now let's say for example if you want to throw a file not found exception how do you do that you use the throw keyword throw new file not found exception okay similarly now let's go ahead and run this fast when we run this what happens you know we'll get that system.io.file not found exception okay now similarly if you want to throw your own exception what do you do you say user already logged in exception and when we run this you get that exception okay but the difference is if you look at the file not found exception if I want to customize the message that we show to the end user I can do that by using one of the constructors okay I can pass in a message to this file not found exception and let's say for example file XYZ is not found when you do this what happens this message will be shown you know as part of that exception object so file XYZ is not found now is it possible to do that kind of a customization for my exception class no because why your constructor does not I mean your exception class does not have any constructor you didn't provide any constructor if you don't provide a constructor we know that dotnet runtime environment automatically provides a default parameterless constructor and that's the only one which is available now so if you have to provide your class the, the the flexibility of passing in a message so that the developer can customize the message they pass into your cust your custom exception then you have to provide that constructor and to do that it's pretty simple okay let's finish this all right so public user already logged in and to this I pass in the string parameter and let's call that message now if you look at the exception class we know that the exception class also has this is if you look at this now our class our user already logged in exception custom exception class is actually inheriting from the exception based class okay so and if you look at the exception based class if you right click at that and say go to definition if you look at the exception based class it has a constructor which takes in a string parameter so now all you have to do is invoke the base class constructor using the base keyword and then invoke this overloaded version passing in the message so now what are we doing we are communicating from the derived class to the base class okay using the base keyword okay so now if you look at this one we get a red squiggly here because once you provide a constructor to your class the default parameterless uh, constructor provided by dotnet framework is taken away so if you want also want users to be able to create uh, just without passing any message they should be able to create user logged in exception if you want to provide that capability then probably have another constructor which doesn't take any parameter now here we don't want so what we are essentially doing here is constructor overloading again we have covered that in a separate session please check um, you know that specific part on constructor overloading okay now if you look at this constructor it doesn't take any parameter and in the exception base class we already have a constructor which does not take any parameter so from your derived class just invoke that specific constructor you know that's one of the overloaded base class constructors okay so now what have you done until now you have provided two constructors to your class okay one which does not take parameter one which takes a string parameter now if the user wants to customize the message all they can do is okay user is logged in 
no duplicate sessions allowed you know you can basically customize it the way you want okay so now if we run this you should see that custom message all right now in part 41 we have we have learned about inner exceptions what is the advantage of using inner exceptions inner exceptions basically allow us to track the original exception okay so if you're not sure about inner exceptions i would strongly encourage you to watch this part 41 before continuing with the session so we know that inner exceptions basically allows us to track the original exceptions now if you look at your class it's not possible you know for this exception to track the original exceptions okay so if you want to provide that capability for your custom exception class then you need to provide that overloaded version okay of constructor if you look at the base class it has got another constructor if you look at this constructor it takes in a message as well as another parameter of type exception okay and basically this is the original exception and you can pass that as a parameter okay so let's go ahead and provide that constructor as well so public user already logged in exception so the first parameter is of type string and the next parameter is of type exception and this one is going to be inner exception and what you do here you call the base class constructor passing in the message and inner exception we have already seen that this base exception class has that constructor so call that overloaded version of the base class constructor and pass in the respective parameters so now we have provided another constructor as well so now using your class it's also possible to track inner exceptions okay so if i try to go ahead and create a an instance of this class look at this there are three overloaded versions now you can see that in the intelligence here all right now another important thing to keep in mind now this class it works but it only works within the same application domain now what's an application domain we will talk about application domains when we talk about remoting web services and wcf okay basically if there are two applications and they want to talk with each other let's say for example i have application a1 and application a2 now if i want application a1 to talk to application a2 then the objects that you create within application a1 has to cross the brown boundary of this a1 application and reach application a2 boundary now when you have to move objects across application boundaries those objects need to be serializable okay so we'll talk the concepts of serialization serialization is nothing but breaking down that object into packets that can be transmitted over the network so if you want to move your object from one application domain to another application domain over the network then the class has to be serializable okay so if you want your cu custom exception class to be remotable or serializable then the first thing that you have to do is to decorate this class with serializable attribute and then if you look at the base exception class the base exception class has an overloaded constructor for serialization purposes which takes in serialization info and if you look at the intellisense the serialization info class is actually present in system.runtime.serialization namespace okay so if we have to use that object we have to import that namespace and then invoke this constructor from our class so let's provide that so first of all let's go ahead and import system dot runtime dot serialization namespace and then we need to provide a constructor for our class which supports serialization so user already logged in so if you look at the base class what is the first parameter it has to be serialization info and the next parameter is of type stream co streaming context so serialization info and let's call that as uh, info and the other one is streaming context and let's call the object reference variable as context and then what we need to do 
we need to call the base class base exception class constructor passing in these parameters so info and streaming context all right so our class at this point our exception class is almost equivalent to any other exception uh, class that's available within the dotnet framework you have provided all the constructor overloaded constructor constructor versions which the end user can use for variety of different purposes and obviously so if you want to call any of these constructors it's possible and if you want to handle this exception so if we want to throw it we throw it in the try block using the throw keyword and to catch that you can use you know user already logged in exception maybe ex and console.writeline ex.message and if you pass any inner exception uh, you know when you're throwing this you can also track that inner exception look at this if I say comma you can actually see one of the overloaded constructors you know taking in a string parameter and the other parameter is of type in our exception okay all right so when we run this now you should see only the message of that exception printed okay so let's quickly review what we have seen so far so creating custom exceptions what are the steps create a class that derive from system.exception class and as a common naming convention and the class name with exception suffix because all dotnet exception uh, exceptions end with exception suffix and if you want your exception class to conform to those standards then name your class so and we provide a public constructor that takes in a string parameter so this constructor simply passes the string parameter to the base exception class and what does this provide to us it provides you know the flexibility for the user to pass in the message that they want into your exception class and if you want to track inner exceptions you basically have to provide uh, you know that overloaded version of the constructor and similarly if you want your exception class to be working across application domains then you need to mark your class as serializable and remember that it is also possible to provide your own custom serialization if you look at this example we are using the default serialization that's provided by the base exception class by invoking uh, by providing that constructor which supports that base class serialization uh, but on the other hand it is also possible to provide your own custom serialization so we'll be talking about serialization and customizing serialization in a later session in detail that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day